Light Table View Methodist Church. It's good to be with you this morning. And I have to apologize because my uh, camera work is not uh, going so well today. So it's just uh, by voice that you're going to hear me. And I hope you'll put up with my voice and not my face. But I can tell you that my face is very beautiful. And you could look at it if you wanted to. I welcome you to our service this morning, and it's so good to have you worshipping with us wherever you are, however you can hear us, whether it's via audio uh, this morning or via the videos on Facebook or on um, on YouTube. We welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ, as we would say every Sunday at church. We'd say you are welcome because this is Christ's home, the church that we belong to. And we long to be back in that place where we worship together, but we know that we can't be there right now because of the COVID pandemic. But we look forward to being reunited sometime in the near future. And so I invite us to pray as we begin our service together. Loving God, thank you so much for gathering us together here in this place to worship you. Thank you for your love which you pour out to us and you fill us up with. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to be filled with your Holy Spirit as we worship you together, even though we're apart. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would just come to us in the words that we sing and the prayers that we pray and in the scriptures that we read for this Sunday, that we would hear you, our God, speaking to us and filling us for new adventures that you have prepared for us. So be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin our service by singing the song, Worship the Lord, with joyful songs of praise. Worship the Lord with joyful songs of praise. Sing of His love, His everlasting grace. He is the Lord, the maker of all things. Heaven adores and all creation sings. Holy, holy, holy God, almighty, worthy of all praise. Great in power and endless glory, worthy. Of all praise, look to the one who leads us all our days, trust in his love and follow all his ways. He is the Lord, the maker of all things, heaven adores, and all creation sings. Holy, holy, holy God Almighty, worthy of all praise. Great in power and endless glory, worthy, worthy of all praise. Gladly approach. His gates, enter His courts with praise. We will rejoice and bless His name. He has been good to us in mercy and faithfulness. We will rejoice and bless His name. Holy. God Almighty, worthy of all praise, great in power and endless glory, worthy, worthy of all praise. You are worthy, worthy of all praise. Yes, Lord, you are worthy of all praise. Every fiber of our being belongs to you. Every part of the universe belongs to you. Everything that we can see and everything that we cannot see 
is in your power and under your control. And so, loving God, as we worship you this morning, we fall on our knees in awe and majesty as we, as we are in awe of your majesty and we celebrate your greatness and your power. As we worship you together, we come to confess our brokenness and our sin. We have not loved you as we should have loved you. We have put our faith in many things other than you and your power, your grace and your mercy for us. And so we come to confess and ask that you would forgive us again, renew us and restore us. And even as these words of confession are on our lips, we hear your words of grace and mercy spoken over us again. As you say, my child, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. And so we pray that you'd help us to make a new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing the hymn, Seek Ye First, the Kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Hallelujah, Hallelujah Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you hallelujah hallelujah we have two scriptures for this sunday service the first one is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26 through to 39. And the second one is from Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33. In Romans, chapter 8, Paul writes from verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those He predestined, He also called. Those He called, He also justified. Those He justified, He also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life? is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We read from Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 33. He told them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is in the largest it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about sixty pounds of flour, until it worked all through the dough. From Matthew thirteen, verse forty four. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven, is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. Before the sermon, we listen to the words of the Lord's Prayer as we pray it in Isikosa or sing it in Isikosa. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, Paul is writing to the congregation there, and if you've been following the Bible studies, which are perhaps a bit long and hard to follow, 
Uh, Romans, the book, um, the letter, is a letter where Paul tries to explain how God's righteousness is so great and majestic that it is imparted onto uh, human beings like you and me. And in this part of Romans uh, chapter 8, he's explained how, how the Spirit triumphs over the law and how the Spirit actually works into our hearts to transform us into, into Christ-likeness, into holiness, to restore the image of God in us. And I think this passage really fits really well with these passages that we've been reading about seeds and, and how they grow and how they are part of the kingdom of God. Because it's inevitable that we who have come to believe in Jesus, we who have asked the Holy Spirit to come and live in our hearts, would be transformed as a seed is planted and grows. So the Spirit planted in our hearts grows into something great within us. And so in verse 26, you can almost imagine this seed of the Holy Spirit deep down in the heart of a human being deep down in the dark and decaying soil of our brokenness that helps us in our weakness. The seed that grows out of the land doesn't know where it should grow or what it should do, and, and somehow, amazingly, it knows where up is, and it, and it grows up out of the soil. We do not know what we ought to pray for, says Paul, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. As if there's something deep down inside of us, as if there's something deep down inside of those seeds that grows up to become the thing that it ought to be. And this expresses a connection between us and God. Spirit is breath. Spirit is not just the Holy Spirit, which is huge, God himself, but the breath that God breathes into our lives. So every breath for us is an in-breathing of the Holy Spirit and an out-breathing of the Holy Spirit. And in every breath which is so deeply intertwined into our lives, God searches our hearts through the Spirit, the mind that knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So deep down inside of every human heart is this seed of the Spirit, this seed of the Gospel, this truth of the life of God, living towards something greater than what we are currently doing or being. That's the context of verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This inevitability, this truth that God is busy growing inside you, re bringing to completion what God has begun in you. In verse 30, those he predestined, he called, those he called, he justified, those he justified, he also glorified. To have that, that shining light of God shining into our hearts, shining into our minds, purifying us and helping us to become the people that we are called and created to be. And so as Jesus carries on speaking to his disciples about seeds, in chapter 13, verse 31 of Matthew's Gospel, he speaks of mustard seeds. These small seeds that grow up to be large garden plants or bushes that become like trees so that birds can perch and nest in their branches. Another parable there, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Reminders that these small things, these small seeds, this yeast inside our hearts, this spirit's breath that is busy transforming us, inevitably works its purpose out in us. And so we need not lose hope. We need not give up on ourselves because we know that there is a power much greater than ourselves at work deep inside of us. Jesus goes on later on to talk about treasure in a field about how a person finds it and, and he hides the treasure and he sells all that he has to come and buy the field. Like a merchant looking for fine pearls who, 
who finds one of great value and does the same thing. And so as we wonder why does Matthew tell us these stories that Jesus taught, remember that Jesus went around and he probably told these stories many times in different contexts and different ways. But Matthew knew that these were important for us to know. Stories for us to know about seeds growing. Stories for us to know about the value of treasure hidden in a field. This reminder that the obscure, the seemingly insignificant, the unseen is incredibly important. We are being transformed from deep within. The seed hidden in a field is like treasure hidden in a field. That treasure hidden in a field is worth digging up, is worth bringing to the light. I'm reminded also of the way Jesus called his disciples to follow him, to make them fishers of men, to go and draw people out of the darkness and up to the light where their colour and purpose would be revealed so that we'd see who we really are in God. And so as Paul speaks about the Spirit interceding for us, about the Spirit interceding with God and knowing our hearts, how God recognises every tiny little special detail about each and every one of us and brings each and every one of those tiny little details out into its colour and its fullness so that we can become the people that we were created to be. Once again, says Jesus in 47, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. It's a beautiful picture of how the kingdom of heaven could be all these different kinds of fish with all the funny looks that they have as we do. But then he speaks of how the fishermen threw the bad away and kept the good and how the bad would be destroyed at the end of the age. I don't think this is so much about telling us to be afraid of hell, but encouraging us to know that that evil fish within us will be destroyed. And as we look at the world around us, we realize that at the coming of the age, the evil that is in the world will be destroyed and we will be set free to be the people we're created to be. As there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth as evil is destroyed. But the righteousness that God has planted in your hearts and in mine will grow up to bear the fruit that it ought to bear. Verse 52 is quite a confusing line. Every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. I'm not entirely sure how to interpret this scripture. And I've read so many different passages about how it might be interpreted. But as I thought of new treasure and old treasure, I thought about what makes treasure, treasure. The thing that makes treasure, treasure is normally that it's from some uh, incorruptible substance, like gold, diamonds, or precious stones, things like that, silver. And this treasure, as old as it can be, can also be new. Because treasure can easily be melted down and reshaped and molded and cleaned up to be some other shiny artifact. And so we are able to take the, the substance of what we are and renew it and change it in terms of the form. And become, become more the people that we are called to be. What does that mean for us? means that we learn generosity and kindness. It means that we learn love and forgiveness. It means that we are not without hope in this world that seems so impossible to live in right now. Because God can take the old scruffy treasures that we are and turn us into something new. And we can take our old habits and our old knowledge and renew it and learn to live in the new light of God's promises 
and future. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you are a seed planting, fish netting, bread baking, pearl hunting God. You are the one who who values us like that merchant values treasure that he has been seeking for all his life. You're the one who sees deep down inside of the dirt of our lives something more that we can become. So we ask that you would shape us and renew us. That you would pray with your spirit in us so that we would understand our experiences of brokenness and struggle. as opportunities for your healing and redemption. We ask that you would help us to become creative and abundant stewards of all that you have given to us. That we would be able to shine your light out into the world through the goodness of your grace. Lord, at this time we really pray for those around us who are struggling. We feel so helpless at a time like this. Everything just seems so confined and so frustrating. We ask that you would give us more wisdom, more grace to understand what it is that we can do. We ask that you would help us as a church and as a community to reach out to our neighbours and love them, to know your love at this time. So Lord, we pray for anybody who's been infected by the COVID virus. We ask that through your Holy Spirit you would lay your healing hands upon them, that you would guide doctors and nurses who care for them and bring them to healing. We pray especially for doctors and nurses at this time as they try to care and help with resources so depleted. Oh Lord, we pray for people who run businesses and are really struggling at this time. As everything has slowed down, so much is closed all over the world. Lord, we ask that you would help the leaders in business and in government and in church to find new ways of being and doing so that we'd see your justice in this world even though our production is stopped and all of these things that seem so important around us are not going, the seeds are still germinating in the ground, plants are still growing, and you continue to breathe life into this planet. So we ask that you'd help us to be good stewards of all that you've given us. So loving Lord Jesus Christ, I pray your blessing upon every member of our congregation. Pray that you would bless every minister in our community, every preacher and steward and all those who try to seek to show your love to those around us. Bless us and help us abundantly, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side With love and strength For each new day, He will make a way, He will make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness, He'll lead me, and rivers 
Jesus in the desert will I see Heaven and earth will fade But his word will still remain He will do something new today God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way He will make a way And now, and now may, may the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the, the, love the love of God, God and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all, forevermore. Amen.